Hi everyone, today we are going to look at the CXC CSEC Chemistry Pass paper for paper 1, June 2003. Before I get into the video, please remember to subscribe and like and share the videos. We are going to do a series of paper 1 past paper question, questions, so stay tuned. Okay, alright, let us begin. Number one, which of the following apparatus or instrument is most suitable for obtaining both cooking oil and water from a mixture of the two above? A filter funnel is used to separate a filtrate from the precipitate. A separatory funnel is used to separate oil to immiscible liquids such as oil and water. So the answer would be B. Fractional distillation or fractional column used to separate substances where they are uh, where they are miscible. Or, so fractional distillation is used to separate miscible liquids and so forth. While volumetric flasks usually for holding uh, reagents and so forth. Part two, which two of the following statements are true about, arrange, about the arrangement of electrons, protons, and neutrons in an atom? Protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus. Electrons can be found anywhere outside the nucleus. The number of protons always equal the number of, elect, of neutrons. And for the number of protons, I'll always equal the number of electrons. The answer would be 1 and 4, which is B. Protons and neutrons are found inside of the nucleus. So the, the, new, the positive nucleus is made up of, which is the mass of the electron, is made up of protons and neutrons. And the number of protons always equal to the number of electrons in a neutral atom. Question 3. Which of the following compounds may be conveniently prepared by precipitation? So we look at the solubility of the compounds and we know that all nitrates are soluble. Also, all sulfates are soluble except barium, lead, to an extent calcium and silver nitrate. And so the answer here would be A, barium sulfate, which is extremely insoluble. Question four, which of the atoms represented below by their electronic configuration will most likely or will, will most readily form a positive ion? The metals are the ones that form the cations, the positive ions. Non-metals, they are the ones that form the negative ions or anions. The, in the electronic configuration, the last number, writing from left to right, would indicate the valence electrons, right? If the valence electron is between 1 to 3, then we know that that element is a metal. Now, the number of electrons on the valence shell would indicate how readily it, it, uh, the atom will form a positive ion okay so for so between a and b we know that those two are metals because they are between one and three now one for a it has one electron on the outer shell so it easily give up that one for b it has two electrons so first it have to give up one and then give up another so a b wouldn't readily b would not readily form a positive ion when compared to A. So the answer would be A. Question 5. In descending group 7 of the periodic table, which two of the following, th uh, following trends occur? The density of the elements increase, the relative atomic mass of the element decreases, the melting point of the element of the elements increases, the reactivity of the elements increases. Group 7 is the halogens, starting from fluorine down to 
iodine, which is what we are accustomed to. Those are the elements that we look at for the CSEC level. Fluorine is a gas. Chlorine is also a gas. Bromine where it change phases and become a liquid and then iodine is a solid so we we recognize that the density increases from fluorine to iodine also the melting point of the elements would increase since we are increasing the states or we are changing the state we are moving from a gas at fluorine to a solid at iodine so we expect the melting point to increase so it is one and three so that's a for two the relative atomic mass of the element actually increases going down the group and for four the reactivity of the elements increases no for the halogens the reactivity increases going towards fluorine so reactivity increase going up the group Number six, dilute sulfuric acid is classified as a strong acid because it produces two moles of hydrogen ions per mole of acid. It requires two moles of sodium hydroxide for neutralization. It's almost completely ionized and is a good conductor of electricity. Ionizes to give both hydrogen ions and sulfate ions. Well, that's true but whenever sulfuric acid dissociates because sulfuric acid is what we call dibasic it has two hydrogens and it's a strong acid so you know that it's a, a single head arrow it produces the hydroxonium ion which is H plus and the sulfate ion so for for every mole of sulfuric acid it produces two moles of H plus okay so the answer for that would be a question six when a saturated solution of copper 2 sulfate is cooled crystals of copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate begin to form because a solubility of copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate increases with decrease in temperature decreases with increasing temperature decreases with decreasing temperature or increases with increasing temperature and to answer this question think of think of saturation as a bubble this circle here and inside of the circle you would have the copper sulfate crystals or the, the copper sulfate if we increase the temperature that means the bubble will get bigger so let's say this small bubble here is room about 25 degrees celsius and we increase the temperature to about 60 degrees celsius here so it means that more spaces are available for for us to add more copper sulfate crystals and that means the saturation or the capacity of the bubble increases right and so we add the crystals now if we were to decrease the temperature from the 60 back to the 25 what would happen to the additional crystals of copper sulfate that we added they would precipitate out as crystals right why is that so because no this decrease in the temperature the spaces reduce and the bubble can only hold the maximum amount of copper sulfate at that particular temperature so we would say that it is completely saturated and it cannot hold anymore okay so saturation really and truly can be looked at as the maximum amount of salute that the, the the solvent can hold at a particular temperature okay so decreasing the temperature we would see the the excess copper sulfate crystals precipitating out so the answer would be c decreasing decreases with decreasing temperature so the solubility would decrease with decreasing temperature 
Number eight, the arrangement of elements in the periodic table is based on the relative atomic mass, no. The atomic number, yes. The mass number, no. The relative molecular mass. So it's the atomic number. And remember, if you were to draw the element, let's say aluminum, Al2713, this means here we have the atomic number. If you look in the periodic table and count 13 spaces going from left to right each time, starting from hydrogen at position 13, you would find, you would find aluminum, right? So apart from telling us the number of protons and the number of electrons in the element, the atomic number also tell us the position of the element in the periodic table. Number nine, when iron three sulfate reacts with aqueous potassium iodide, a brown coloration of iodine is produced. Which of the following deduction is correct? Iron three sulfate is a reducing agent or iodine, the iodide ion has been oxidized to iodine or the iron three sulfate has lost electrons or the iodide ion has gained electrons. Let us write the equation for that. The ionic equation for that. Fe3 plus plus the sulfate ion plus the potassium ion plus the iodide ion and what we are interested in is the iodine molecule that was produced and the iodide ion so here iodide is minus one and over here the iodine molecule is zero so what and they are asking us for the the discoloration the, the brown coloration of the iodine is produced Okay, and they want to know why is that so and the most suitable answer for that is B the iodide ion has been oxidized to iodine so it moves from minus 1 to 0 right and remember oxidation is an increase in oxidation number and here it was a minus one and it moved to zero so that is an increase in the oxidation number so this is the most suitable answer there we see that the iodide ion did not gain an electron that's obvious right here based on the equation the iron three sulfate is the reducing agent the the iron, the, the iron 3 sulfate has lost electrons. So the most suitable answer would be B. Number 10, which of the following statement about sodium metal are correct? It contains sodium plus ions and mobile electrons it contains sodium minus ions and mobile electrons not true it contains cations which repel each other other true it contains anions which repel each other that's not true so it is i and three so it's one and three so that's a number 11 when aqueous silver nitrate is added to an aqueous solution of magnesium chloride, a white precipitate forms. The ionic equation for the formation of this precipitate is, so it's silver nitrate, it's the silver ion, which forms a plus one ion, plus the chloride ion, which forms a minus one chloride ion to give silver chloride. So the answer here is D, which is the white precipitate. Question 12. In which of the following, in which two of the following equations are the underlying reagents acting as an oxidizing agent? Oxidation can be defined as an increase in oxidation number or the gaining of oxygen or the loss of oxygen so let us see which of these underlying species doing any of the above here sulfur dioxide form the sulfur atom here so sulfur dioxide lost oxygen right so it lost the oxygen and gave it to hydrogen sulfide 
so it means that sulfur dioxide is, is acting as the oxidizing agent it causes the other species to undergo oxidation so that's correct additionally oxidizing agent usually undergo reduction themselves so we can see where the sulfur dioxide lost the oxygen and gain the and and, and, and and become the sulfur metal not the sulfur metal the sulfur atom my apologies potassium iodide the potassium ion still the potassium ion over here the iodide ion the iodide ion uh, was oxidized so the iodide ion itself was oxidized so it is not acting as an oxidizing agent something else caused the potassium caused the iodide ion in potassium iodide to oxidize and since it is underlined and we're looking at those that are underlined we have to rule out potassium iodide iron 2 chloride to iron 3 chloride again iron 3 chlor iron 2 iron 2 plus was oxidized to iron 3 plus so something is causing the iron 2 plus to oxidize and we are looking for the underlying species to cause to allow other species to undergo oxidation part four copper oxide so the copper oxide lost the oxygen so it was reduced and it gave it to the hydrogen so copper oxide causes the hydrogen gas to undergo oxidation so this would be an oxidizing agent so it's one and four which is b question 13 when crystals of potassium nitrate are dissolved in water the temperature of the solution decreases because all right to answer this question let us use the energy profile diagram of the product and the reactant for starting with the reactant for an endothermic process because we all know about potassium nitrate that it, it's an end the, the, the beaker feels cold when they touch when it is touched so for an endothermic process we know that the reactant is lower than the product so this is the product and this is the reactant so let us see which one and it's an increase in energy <clears throat> let us see excuse me let us see which one would fit the graph drawn there a little energy is required to break down the crystal structure of the potassium nitrate little energy no heat is always absorbed when a substance dissolve not sure about that the energy content of dissolved potassium nitrate is higher so the potassium the dissolved potassium nitrate would represent the product than that of solid potassium nitrate and the solid potassium nitrate would represent the reactant so my best bet would be c potassium nitrate is colder than water so the answer is c there question 14 the high melting point of ionic compounds may be due to the arrangement of ions large number of ions attraction among ions or movement of ions remember for ionic compounds it's the attraction of the ions so the greater the attraction the greater the energy to break those bonds when a negative ion meets a positive ion they are attracted to each other the electrostatic force force of attraction and to break that requires a large amount of energy to do so so it's the attraction attraction among the ions question 15 which of the following statements about chemical reactions is not correct energy is given out when bonds break and take in when bonds form no in order for you to break a bond you have to absorb energy and when bonds are formed energy is released so let but let us see what the others say chemical reactions involve the making and breaking of bonds that's true endothermic reaction take energy from the surrounding that's true 
exothermic reaction gives energy to the surrounding. That's true. So the endothermic, the beaker would feel cold. In the exothermic, the beaker would feel hot. So the answer for this one is A. Question 16. A substance that conducts an electric current but remains chemically unchanged is A. Aqueous copper 2 sulfate. Well, copper 2 sulfate, when the copper 2 plus ions uh, migrate towards the cathode, it will change from copper 2 plus to copper metal. So that is chemically unchanged. So it cannot be A. Copper, the copper that is used in your electronic devices well the, the, the plugs and so forth to charge your devices and so forth it's actually copper most in most cases there are copper wires inside of them and they do not undergo any chemical change that is why you are able to use them over an extended period of time okay sulfur is a non-metal and so it doesn't conduct electricity solid sodium chloride would have to be in a molten sodium chloride would have to be in a molten or aqueous state for it to conduct electricity and even so it would be chemically changed so the best answer there would be b question 17 which of the following can exactly neutralize 20 centimeter cube of a two molar sodium hydroxide 20 centimeter cube to find the moles of that would be first convert the 20 centimeter cube to dm cube and if we use the formula m equal to moles over volume and rearrange it so that we are finding the moles in each case it would be moles equal to molarity which is big m times volume and if we plug in the molarity for sodium hydroxide, which is 2, and the volume, which is 0 0.02, we would get 0 0.04. So what we are looking for is which of these acid would, would produce 0 0.04 moles. Okay. For the hydrochloric acid, what's the mole for hydrochloric acid? If we put that in the equation, but first convert the 10 centimeter cube to dm cube it would be the molarity which is 4 moles per dm cube multiplied by the volume which would be 0 0.01 so for hydrochloric acid it is also 0 0.04 moles for the sulfuric acid 10 centimeter cube of a 2 molar so we convert the 10 centimeter cube to dm cube which is 0 0.01 and multiply that with the two molar so to get the moles of the sulfuric acid in the 10 centimeter cube that would be 0 0.02 however sulfuric acid and hydro and sodium hydroxide would react in a 2 to 1 mole ratio so we would have to multiply the 0 0.02 by 2 to get the answer. So that is also 0 .0, 0 0.04 for moles for the sulfuric acid. And the nitric acid, which is 20 centimeter cube of a 4 molar. To find the moles of nitric acid, we convert the 20 cm cube to dm cube, which is 0 0.02 multiply by 4 so that's 0 0.08 so the nitric acid is out of it so it's 1 and 2 so the answer is C number 18 some calcium carbonate was reacted with excess hydrochloric acid the volume of carbon dioxide evolved was recorded and plotted against time which of the following graph graphs uh, represent this reaction remember for the rate of a reaction to be observed, you know that the reactant decreases while the concentration of the product increases. So A is the answer. And even though it says excess, the excess hydrochloric acid, that excess would be wouldn't be would be insignificant compared to the calcium carbonate. 
which would be the limited limiting reagent in this case because they if there are no calcium carbonate then that excess hydrochloric acid wouldn't make any sense okay and remember if we were to draw remember the graph draw the graph showing that for the reactants you would see that as the reactant decreases the product increases number 19 in which of the following processes is fractional distillation distillation not used refining of crude oil that requires fractional distillation separation of methanol from methanol water mixture that's a miscible liquid and it requires fractional distillation part c separation of chlorophyll in a leaf extract that is chromatography paper chromatography to be exact so it's c separation and d says separation of liquid air into nitrogen and oxygen that's also that also require fractional distillation number 20 graphite can be used as a lubricant because of strong attraction between the hexagonal layers of carbon atoms that's not true if that were the case then graphite wouldn't be able to be used as lubricants b weak attraction between the hexagonal layers of the carbon atoms that is true the weak intermolecular forces of attraction is the reason why graphite is able to be used as lubricant and you know have, a, have some amount of flexibility to it and so forth so the answer is b 21 which of the following sulfates are insoluble remember all sulfates are soluble except barium calcium lead mercury silver and here we have barium and lead sulfate being present so it's one and three so that's a 22 the mass of an element produced in electrolysis is proportional to the quantity of electricity which has been passed the volume of the electrolyte no the mass of the electrolyte no the mass of the electrode no so it's just the quantity of electricity which has been passed so that's i only so that's a 23 which of the following statements best characterizes as a, a catalyst a it increases the activation energy a, a catalyst lower the activation energy so that's not so a is not it b it alters the quantity of the products form catalyst does not take part in the chemical reaction so it's not b c it all it is always unchanged physically at the end of a reaction not in most cases d not in not in all cases d it is always unchanged chemically at the end of the reaction this is most likely a catalyst should be unchanged you should be able to get regenerate the catalyst at the end of the reaction 24 which of the following operations result in sublimation remember sublimation is going straight from the solid to the gas do uh, did not take part in the liquid phase so it's from solid all the way to the gas heating of solid sodium chloride would result in the liquid the sodium chloride melt b so that's not it b cooling of oxygen if we cool oxygen we get liquid oxygen so that's not it heating of ethanol eating ethanol would produce the vapors so that's not it heating of iodine crystals so the iodine crystals when heated would form the iodine gaseous molecule so it is d 25 how many neutrons and electrons does the particle x2 plus have it says 2 plus so we know that two electrons were lost so it's between a and c and it's asking for neutrons and neutrons is the mass number which is this number taken from the atomic number which is 12 so it's 12 and 10 so which is that's a okay now question 26 which of the following sources of energy is most commonly used in the world today 
petroleum oil, crude oil, fossil fuels. They all they all came from fossil fuels. 27. Study the following thermochemical equation. X plus Y equal Z. Delta H equal to minus B K J. So this is an exothermic reaction because of the negative sign there. Which of the following methods can be used to compute the value of delta B? Now, for delta B is to find delta B generally speaking it is the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants so it's product minus reactants okay and in this case the product is smaller than that of the reactant so that's that is why we end up with a negative value so which one energy of Z minus the energy of X and Y energy of x and y minus the energy of z no the sum of energies of x and y no so the answer is a so it's i only 28 which of the following processes provides evidence in support of the particulate nature of matter that's the fusion you remember the experiment about the ammonia and hydrochloric acid we put one in one end of the tube and the other in another end and the two gases come together and form a white a white solid on the glass container that's the diffusion process and that experiment alone account for about two of the two or three of the of the particulate theory of matter 29 sulfuric acid forms a sodium salt sodium hydrogen sulfate and sodium sulfate its basicity is therefore two so remember earlier we spoke about the basicity of sodium being um of sulfuric acid being two which is h2so4 the mere fact that the two is present indicates that it can form a normal salt or a or an acidic salt an acidic salt is the salt that contains the hydrogen within the salt okay all right question 30 a sample of a sample of substance n was placed in solution m which of the following diagrams represent pairs of experiment that would be most suitable to determine how the concentration of M affects the rate of the reaction. So here we have uh, N being added to being added to the solution of M and we want to identify how the concentration changes when N is added. So in A we see that it's a two molar solution of M initially and then after we had um, it is observed that a one molar solution of M is produced. For B, a one molar solution still end up with a one molar solution after. For C, it cold but still a one molar solution. Hot, still a one molar solution. And D, I am not sure what is going on right here. So we realize that the, the concentration decrease when a added so it means that the the this this would affect the rate of the reaction because remember as the reaction as the reactant decreases the product increases and you can see that the concentration of the reactants here decreases because we started out with two and we are we are now at one so it's a 31 anions of isotopes x and y have so let us use hydrogen proteum and deuterium right this the same number of electrons true the same number of protons true different number of neutrons as i can see the neutron numbers are different and remember 
the mass number is made up of the number of protons and the number of neutrons so in essence it is the neutron that is different in isotopes so it is one two and three so it's d 32 which of the following could produce carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide as pollutants geothermal no solar energy definitely not fossil fuels yes and biogas yes so it is two and sorry it is three and four three and four so that's d 33 at one atmospheric pressure the particles move fastest in a gas at 100 degrees celsius which is d higher energy so it moves faster which of the following pairs of acids is monobasic remember monobasic only contain one hydrogen or it release one hydrogen one hydroxonium ion or h plus ion in solution per molecule so it's hcl and this is one two so that's ethanoic acid hcl and sulfuric acid that's dibasic sulfuric acid this is dibasic and um Oh, what? this is one of this is ozalic acid and that would release two moles of H plus okay so the answer is E ethanoic acid releases the one mole of H plus per ethanoic acid molecule and H plus releases one mole of H plus per hydrochloric acid molecule 35 all of the following gases are colorless except nitrogen we know it has its distinctive brownish looking color 36 which of the following elements react most vigorously with H plus ions to give hydrogen gas and again here we would use the reactivity series and zinc would be above all of these in the reactivity series so it would react more vigorously or violently with with hydrogen gas 37 which of the following is a weak electrolyte remember weak acid form weak electrolyte lead molten lead no aqueous ethanoic acid ethanoic acid which is vinegar which is a weak acid dilute hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid is a strong acid molten lead bromide again those are strong electrolytes so the molten forms are strong electrolytes it's the weak acid that forms the weak electrolyte which is B and in case you're wondering why it's because of the amount of H plus that it releases per molecule one H plus per molecule it's the amount it's the mole of it that it release so it's not enough 38 item 38 refers to the following diagrams dilute sulfuric acid and calcium carbonate we have here dilute hydrochloric acid and calcium carbonate dilute sulfuric acid and calcium carbonate dilute hydrochloric acid and calcium carbonate and in each case the collection is either inverted or are placed downward in which of the experiment would the amount of carbon dioxide collected be the greatest no one may expect that it is sulfuric acid because sulfuric acid is is a strong acid right but that's not the case why when sulfuric acid reacts with um, when sulfuric acid reacts with the carbonate the salt is produced which is called calcium sulfate calcium is a protective barrier for the surface so it would form so it would form the calcium sulfate would form over the 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 chips 
the marble chips that of the car calcium carbonate and prevent any further reaction so you would not get as much yield as you would like um, in terms of the products while for the hydrochloric acid uh, the the calcium chloride which is soluble wouldn't interfere with the with the reaction it wouldn't form any coats on the on the surface of the the, the, the calcium carbonate chips and so you will get as maximum yield as you possibly can so that's one two carbon dioxide is heavier than air so it must be collected in a downward uh, downward orientation lighter gases are collected upward like ammonia heavier gases are collected downward so the answer would be carbon dioxide um, hydrochloric acid with dilute hydrochloric acid with carbon dioxide the calcium carbonate in a downward orientation and that's part and that would be two so which is b number 39 which of the following gives an alkaline reaction with moist litmus paper ammonia is alkalinic uh, nitrogen nitrogen oxide would be would be a uh, neutral it's a neutral it's one of those neutral oxide hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid is acidic and water is also a neutral is neutral so it would not it would not turn the blue litmus paper it would not turn the red litmus paper blue so in this case the answer is a which turns the red lip, litmus paper to blue indicating an alkaline is present number 40 which of the following aqueous solution will produce a blue precipitate with aqueous sodium hydroxide we are blue precipitate remember qualitative qualitative analysis when we add sodium hydroxide to the unknown we get a blue ppt and that indicates what copper so the answer for that would be c 41 which of the following statement is true ammonia is an acidic gas that's not true based on question 39 ammonia is soluble in water and function as a base extremely soluble in water ammonia that is nitric acid is used as fertilizer no nitric acid is corrosive so you can imagine if that used as fertilizer nitric nitric acid contains two replaceable hydrogen atoms we know the formula for nitric acid is hno3 so that's not true so the best answer there would be b 42 aluminum is more reactive than iron yet after a while a piece of aluminum left exposed to the atmosphere becomes corrosion resistant whilst a similar piece of iron continues to corrode continues to corrode this is because aluminum has reacted completely no iron oxide form is more reactive than aluminum oxide form no oxide film on aluminum protects the metal from further corrosion but the oxide film on iron does not yes iron oxide reacts with the iron below but aluminum oxide does not react with the aluminum below so the unsulfate is insoluble because it is insoluble answer is c 43 which of the following methods is used for the extraction of metal at the top of the electrochemical series at the top we normally use the molten oxides so that's c 48 a comp sorry 44 which of the following metal metals will not react with water under any condition copper is below hydrogen ion in the electrochemical series 45 which of the following observation would you expect to make when excess sodium hydroxide solution is added to a solution containing zinc remember zinc is in solid forms of ppt in, a, in, in in dropwise sodium hydroxide but it is soluble in excess so a colorless solution forms in excess so the best one would be 
per B would be B soluble in excess. 46 to 47 refers to the following, following organic compounds. Ethanol, ethene, ethanoic acid, ethyl acetate. In answering items 46 to 47, a particular choice from the above may be made more than once, once, or not, not at all. Which of the organic compounds undergo addition reaction? Ethene would undergo addition reaction. So 46 would be B, given that it's an alkene. And whatever compound is being, it's reacting with adds across the double bond. 47 in emis is immiscible with water and is sweet smelling so the only sweet smelling compound here is the ester ethyl ethanoid which is d 47 is d 48 a compound has the following structural formula right given there which two of the following statements are correct the compound is an alcohol as we can see the OH group present right there so it's an alcohol it is a branch chain alkane it's not an alkane it can react with sodium yes it reacts with sodium to form the ethoxide is an unreactive substance so the answer is one and three one and three which is a the name of this compound is one two three four so it's ethyl butanol so it's one two so it's two ethyl butanol all right 49 which of the following would you expect to form an addition polymer remember the addition polymer are the ones that contain the double bonds and look throughout the carbon to carbon double bond that is throughout the compound throughout the options a is the only one that has the carbon to carbon double bond with the cyano group present okay now question 50 ethanol is not used as well we know that it is used in beverages it is used as fuel it is used as solvent it is not used as lubricants why because ethanol <laughs> ethanol evaporates very quickly so it wouldn't be able to stick around to lubricate anything 51 in which of the following is the amide linkage present terylene is is a polyester starch is is the polymer of glucose Nylon is the reaction between the dioic acid and the diamine, which would produce the, the amide linkage and polythene is an alkene. So the answer for that is B, nylon. 52. The equation shown above represents a reaction with which is classified as so here we have the alkane which is ethane reacting with chlorine I'm assuming that this is done in the light so that the reaction would go progress nicely so it reacts with ethane to produce chloroethene and hydrochloric acid right um, so this reaction is substitution reaction because you're replacing uh, each time you're replacing a chlorine atom with an hydrogen atom so it is a substitution reaction 53 yeast may be used in the fermentation of starch to ethanol because it is acidic no it contains enzymes which act on starch that's true yeast itself produces ethanol it fixes the oxygen needed in the reaction from the atmosphere 
so there are enzyme inside the, the inside the yeast that convert starch to the alcohol 54 the process by which large molecule molecules of hydrocarbon are broken up into smaller molecules is called cracking saponification is making so polymerization is the chain forming the chain reaction condensation is the removal of water and you know um, a removal of small amount of molecule from various reactions 55 which of the following is a or are condensation polymerization terylene is a polyester so it involves the reaction between an ester so that's condensation nylon also a condensation reaction starch is also a condensation reaction polythene which is an alkene that undergo addition reaction so the answer is one two and three okay 56 which of the following substances give gives a blue color coloration with iodine well i would say dark blue but iodine react with starch to give a dark blue or a bluish black um, color so we know that 56 is starch 57 the gas produced can be best identified if liquid x is what so we have glucose solution plus yeast and we know that the glucose and the yeast react to give the ethanol carbon dioxide and water so it's the carbon dioxide gas that is produced and the most popular identification of carbon dioxide is the fact that it term turn lime water milky or cloudy so that's a and 59 58 to 59 sorry refer to the following diagram which represents three conversions in organic chemistry ethanoic acid to ethyl ethanoid ethanoic acid must react with ethanol to give ethyl ethanoate and then ethyl ethanoate can go undergo acid hydrolysis to produce ethyl, the acid and the alcohol ethanol oxidizes to give ethanoic acid so let us see what they are asking which of the following ish equations best represent conversion i so this is the conversion of i so you need the ethanoic acid so because this is an ester you know ester is produced from the reaction of acid carboxylic acid and alcohols so which one contain the carboxylic acid and alcohol a we have the ethanoic acid and we have the ethanol b we have the ethanoic acid and we also have the ethanol which is a double-headed arrow meaning that it exists in equilibrium and D, we have the ethanoic acid and the ethanol to give to give the ester right here. To give the ester here, yes. As well. So which one would which one would represent or which one is the best representation? Of the reaction between ethanol and ethanoic acid part a part a has water and water being produced so that's out of it part b has a double headed arrow and part c has so when naming remember when naming alcohols sorry when naming esters when writing esters rather the acid part is written first followed by the alcohol part Okay, so 
here we you have the C two H five C O O O C H. So this is one, two, three. But what we need, so this is what we need. We need ethyl ethanoate. C double bond O ethyl ethanoate. So this would be the ethanoate CH3 COO and the ethyl group which is C2H5. So we need one, so we need two, three, four hydrogen, four carbons. Part D has two, three, four, five carbons. So part D is out of it. Part C, two, three, four carbons uh, and, um, and part A two three four carbons but part A I'm seeing part A producing two water there so I'm not I'm, I'm not sure what that is saying so the answer would be C which is CA3, COO, CH2 plus water. Okay. 59, for the conversion of two from the ethyl um, ethanoate to the alcohol, ethyl ethanoate is heated under reflux with another compound. The name of this compound is, is it sodium chloride? ethanol fatty acids or sodium hydroxide so ethyl ethanoate can undergo two type of hydrolysis you can have acid hydrolysis or base hydrolysis and in this case given that sodium hydroxide is the only base here okay and number 60 the compound propene C3 CH3 CH CH2 so that's the compound propene C double bond propene so the carbon to carbon double bond there is at the terminal carbon reacts with bromine to produce what so this reaction would be an addition reaction so you, you would expect the dibromine compound So the answer for that would be C. Okay. All right. So we have come to the end of the video. Uh, continue to study smart and support the channel by subscribing. Thank you for watching and see you real soon.